Hello everyone, Father Jared coming to you. Uh, over the coming six weeks, I'm just going to be making a series of uh, videos, I don't know if you call it catechesis, reflection, uh, trying to help us reflect and enter more deeply into the mystery of Mass. Because as people uh, begin to come back, which uh, you know it's been a great thing here at Holy Angels, our Mass attendance has been above pre-COVID uh, attendance levels. So praise God for that gift. Uh, but I think it's also important for us to remember what's going to Mass going on at Mass in order for us to continue to make that uh, commitment, that conviction that we should be there each and every week with our family, with our friends, and to really make that effort to make Sunday Mass a central part of our lives. Um, and so, you know, I just was then reading about St. Mary Magdalene and went back to the Gospel passage in John to where she anoints the feet of Christ shortly before, you know, in Holy Week, shortly before he is going to go to Jerusalem, uh, be crucified, die, and then rise from the dead. So leading up to the Paschal mystery. And this beautiful expression, this beautiful act of her buying this very expensive perfumed oil, which scandalizes Judas and actually scandalizes many of the people present there. They're scandalized by the fact that the Lord is allowing this woman to touch him. They are scandalized by this sort of over-the-top act of reverence and honor and love that Mary Magdalene gives to our Lord. And then Judas makes the comment that could not this perfumed oil have been sold for 300 denarii, which, I, which was a quite a bit of money in the ancient world, and given to the poor. Now, it's important to note what the Lord's response. He says to all of them, leave her alone. She has done something good for me. He delights, he's thankful, he's grateful, and he accepts her act of homage, her act of love. And in this scene, the church has always seen its example on why do we have, you know, some people always ask, why does the church have such beautiful things? If you sold everything, wouldn't that be able to like feed the poor and all these other things? And we can kind of debate exactly what that happens there. But the important thing is, I think those lines where people say that, we can repeat back to them the same words of the Lord. Leave, leave the church, leave the faithful alone. They have done something good for the Lord. We continue to do something good for the Lord. This is why in so many Catholic churches you see beautiful vestments, beautiful um, paintings, beautiful statues, beautiful altars, beautiful vessels, chalices, patents, you know, all those things why we use gold, silver, precious metal whenever we are celebrating the Mass in order to contain, in order to protect the dignity of our Lord's body and blood in the Most Holy Eucharist on the new parents of bread and wine. And so you may have noticed that at Holy Angels, we've had recently the candlesticks that were at the high altar redone. We have some very nice uh, new candlesticks that are on the altar. And even, you know, our Altar Rosary Society, so I'm going to go off camera for a second to retrieve this rather beautiful, uh, you know, chalice here that the Altar Rosary Society had redone for the parish. And people always ask, like, why do we do that? Why is that something that the church has always so emphasized throughout the ages? And it is because it is a reenactment, a recapitulation of what St. Mary Magdalene does for our Lord in the 12th chapter of John's Gospel. What we are reminded and what we are meant to be drawn into is that by these little acts, by those acts of, or acts, by the action of having really nice vestments, really nice vessels, we are pointing to the dignity of Mass itself, the dignity of the Lord, and that ultimately it's not just about us. It's not about us at all, really. But instead, it's about the honor that we give to him, that he delights for us to give him due praise and honor. And while we can never really know perhaps the true disposition of someone's heart, I think that our exterior actions display that. Our exterior, the exterior action of St. Mary Magdalene reveals the deep love that she has for the Lord in her heart. By her act of humility, by her act of praise, by her act of care for our Lord in that moment, the deep love that she has for him who has forgiven so many of her sins and all of her sins, her heart is revealed. 
and people find that scandalous. And we can all, and people will oftentimes be scandalized by why you do that, why do we give so much attention, precedence to the Lord? And it is because that is what his due is. Now, obviously, there could never be enough gold, enough silver, enough nice vestments, enough nice fabric to give fitting praise and honor to our Lord. But I think it is important to remember that St. John Vianney, who prayed for the conversion of his entire parish, the first thing that he did, and every chance that he got, any sort of extra money that the parish got, he would go and buy nice vestments, the most beautiful monstrances, the most beautiful chalices, basically the nicest stuff for the furnishings of the church that you could ever imagine. That's where he started. And then from there, grew up an orphanage. From there, grew up the eventual conversion of his entire parish where people were going to confession time and time again because they saw how central the Lord was to his life, how central the Lord was in the Eucharist to that parish's life. And so it is important for us to remember that this is why we do that as Catholics. That's why it's so central to what we do. That is why we make these little adjustments to the liturgy, to the sanctuary, to beautify that space so that we can be drawn more deeply into the mystery of Mass, but even more importantly for us to show our fitting honor and the praise and the love that we have for Him. You know, if we can afford to get the nicest of things for our homes, our cars, even our schools, can we not lavish and dote upon the Lord, perhaps even just a little? If we can have nice things, why can't we do something beautiful for Him? Something beautiful for the Lord. A phrase from... St. Mother Teresa, do something beautiful for the Lord. That is a little reason, a little reflection upon why we do these beautiful things for the Lord, because by giving those beautiful things, by giving those things in honor of Him, by emphasizing that beauty, we reveal the homage and the love that exists in our hearts for the Lord. That's all I really had for today, but I hope to see each and every one of you at Mass this weekend, uh, or at least I hope that you go to Mass this coming weekend. I guess Father Aaron has most of them, and I'm sure some people are tuning in from elsewhere. But just uh, know that you're, that at Mass, the reason why we have beautiful things is to reveal the disposition of our own hearts and to help draw us more deeply into the mystery of what's really going at Mass, which is heaven coming to earth, the action of Jesus Christ on the cross, and the action of His resurrection coming to fruition within our lives by giving us grace upon grace.